So it is a pleasure to be here and having you in the audience uh, waiting for our communication. So what I am going to present, if this works, mm -mm. I forgot. <laughs> Okay, it works. So about this communication, just uh, to, to uh, frame briefly the communication, this contribution, a few um, definitions that you all must be aware of. So what is education? We all know that this is a process of transferring knowledge and uh, skills, values, everything that we can imagine to a group of people that probably will not have those uh, knowledge and skills. And what is innovation? We all know also that this is, should be something original and more effective or new that breaks into the market or the society. So this is uh, the frame of educational innovation which is uh, this track. Uh, we believe that uh, we must make uh, a mix of what is formal education and informal education because all our students are uh, able to see many different environments so this will contribute for their uh, education. About this contribution, what is this about? So the work is about one experience that was uh, implemented at ISEP at this school. Uh, it was implemented last summer uh, by means of a summer course. Uh, we all know summer courses, they exist for many years, so uh, why do you think this particular one uh, was innovative? So for us at ISEP, we thought it was innovative because it was addressed to Asian students, a particular kind of Asian students who performed the best at their own schools. So they were at high school uh, and they were gifted the participation in this summer, uh, summer course, which was devoted to engineering for sustainable development. Uh, and the, what was the goal of uh, implementing this, uh, this uh, course. One of the goals was to um, enhance uh, the internationalization of our school, which we already had started, but we receive foreign students in different environments, in, usually in classes, and uh, uh, we would, not, would like to discover if our teachers were ready for this internationalization in a larger scale. Uh, would it be the same to teach one or two Erasmus students in one particular class where we have 20, 30 students that only speak Portuguese or to teach a class in a foreign language for all the students except maybe except for those that are coming from other countries. We also would like to test our Portuguese students uh, for their ability to adapt to this new situation, which means that they will be learning in a non-native language, which is really something different from, for most of them. Uh, how did we do it? We, chosen, we have chosen an equal number of Portuguese students, so there were eight Korean students at the beginning, and we have chosen eight Portuguese students to participate in this course. They came from uh, different engineering fields, four of them from the chemical engineering field, and four from mechanical, civil, and energy engineering. Um, we had something, uh, we had to take care of these foreign students, so we received them at the airport or at the bus station to get them uh, introduced to our town, not to just let them come and be alone. 
And another thing that we did for this student was to find accommodation in the schools, in the students' residence nearby ZEP. So they were pretty close to our school. Again, and continuing, how did we do this? So we had to choose a theme that could be addressed by all of these students that would probably have different perspectives and so it could, should be transversal to different areas, either for, for engineering, for pharmacy, for ar architecture or other area, because the Korean students came from very different areas. So the theme that was uh, chosen was the rehabilitation of historic cities. And as we are in Porto, which is a uh, world heritage site, we chosen Porto as uh, with a sustainable development uh, challenge uh, for these students. Um, to frame this, um, this theme, uh, I can show you these uh, images. Probably some of you have been there yesterday, you have been downtown. I was not, I was working, <laughs> unfortunately. But then here you can see one example of what is old and new, how we can cope with ancient buildings and newer buildings, different functionalities of the buildings, and so these are different images for the same part of the town. So this is seen from the street and this is seen from, from the air. Again, we are uh, working in a world heritage site and there are some polls that these uh, students and all of us should know. Um, the Clericus Tower, which is here again, the same, so it is very ancient and it's uh, something very traditional. And also this Lelo Library, where you must have been there just outside the door. You shouldn't have been inside, but you must go there. So this is very interesting for us and we think it's important not all, only because of being an heritage from the past, but also because it has been used as a symbol of something modern. Uh, you, are, you know Harry Potter, and this is one of the sites that was used for the filming. So for our students, it was something that was also interesting. Well, to teach such a course, we have to choose the right teachers and how do we do it? Who are the right teachers? Um, the structure of the course uh, already existed. This was the second edition of a course that previ previously had, been, uh, had taken part in Lisbon, so the year before it was taken in Lisbon, and we had a special um, demand uh, that it was not taken again in Lisbon, so it came to Porto. When it came to Porto, we had to choose a few of new teachers. In the end, almost of all, all of the teachers were from the ISEP. Only two came from Lisbon, from the first school, which was uh, Isel. Um, another thing about the teachers was that, uh, well, they knew each other, but they never had worked before together. So it was also some uh, process of learning how to work together in a different environment because this was not the usual environment that we take in our classes. Uh, they came from different engineering departments, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, electrotechnical engineering. Almost all the school was represented in this course. And they usually taught classes in the same type of course, either only in graduation or only in post-graduation. So they were used to a, a particular kind of students. So it was also a, another, um, something, another thing different for our teachers. Um, they were uh, these teachers were chosen because of their particular ability to educate under informal, informal conditions. We were expecting that. And to react promptly to any event, having different styles of communication and the names of all these people in the course 
teaching in the course uh, or uh, are uh, here in this slide. Well, the approach to this course was a problem-based learning approach and the students had to do almost all the work. Of course, they had to study, they had to learn, but the final result was that this process was participated directly by the students, they were directly involved, and this was very important because all the students, all the Korean students, I must correct that, all the Korean students were on their vacations. The Portuguese students were in their final examinations period, so they had to take a, a small break from the examinations to attend this course, which was something uh, that was different also for this and was also a, cha a challenge. How, were the, how did we uh, organize the students? Well, you see all the names of the students in this, in this table and what we did try to do at first was to have uh, to prepare teams that had the most uh, various uh, skills in, in their own team. So we have to choose two Korean and two Portuguese students for each group. We try to make these uh, groups as even as possible. So whenever possible, we had two boys and two girls two Portuguese and two Koreans, and mixing the, uh, the different uh, fields of specialty where these students were cam coming from. We were not so, uh, we had not so, um, uh, well, we didn't pay attention to their ages. There were students from 22, maybe to 30 years. The Korean were younger than the Portuguese, part of the Portuguese, but we didn't take that in attention. About the learning environments, why were these uh, different? Well, you see one kind of environment that seems quite traditional, this is uh, a teaching room uh, where we have computers. All these students had uh, previously asked for uh, having access to computer because they didn't want to bring their own computers. They were going for vacations afterwards. So we provided the room with the computers. But this was a room with computers where they had coffee, where they almost had lunch and whenever they wanted because coffee was there from the first uh, time in the morning, from 8 o'clock in the morning, which was almost the time when classes started, until the end of the day, and everything was eaten and taken because all these boys and girls were really working very hard. So we have all, even a, a birthday cake because we have, we have a birthday of one of our students. Um, one part of the time was allocated to these formal teaching classes by I say informal teachers, teachers because we try to be as informal as possible and teamwork was encouraged. In this picture we, you cannot see the teamwork because we have taken the picture of the, only the Korean students but even so they have lots of teamwork. And an example of different learning environments which include city tourism that was um, used for both the purpose of education of the students and also for uh, socializing uh, considerations. So uh, they went for a tour and uh, we went for a tour with the students and they had a little, a little notion of what is Porto, what is our heritage and not only on the uh, cultural aspects of our ten, town but all also uh, about uh, what we can eat in Porto. This is not the, the so-called Francesinha, but it's also one part that is very known in, in Portugal, in Porto. Another part uh, for after classes activities, they went to a, a football match. It was a very important game between Porto and another uh, team which was not Portuguese, so it was very important and then they went together to this football match. 
And there was a final presentation of the work that all the students had prepared. And we had uh, um, foreign peop um, external uh, people in the audience to assist the presentation. Also, we had an informal lunch, which was the farewell lunch, and we used this also to teach sustainability in an informal environment. We, had, we took advantage of a very new, uh, beautiful garden that we have in ISAP, and it was uh, much less expensive with, if, than if we had a formal lunch, and everyone in the school could participate. It was open to everyone that was passing by. There was a change in the attitudes of uh, the students. The girls were really shy at the beginning, but as you can see, in the end, it, this was the last day, they were not shy anymore. This is another aspect of this change of attitude of these Korean students. They prepared uh, a dinner uh, for us, for all of us, for their colleagues and for us, and they even prepared the menu for us. You can see here. Some of the results, I'm just a few results in these slides, and I am in the, the last slides, about the course evaluation, which was mainly uh, ev very well evaluated, uh, particularly in what concerns uh, uh, the, the use of teamwork for these students was very important. Uh, the best work was awarded with a, with a prize, and uh, interestingly, the Portuguese students uh, uh, had gave those prize, their prize to the Korean students too, because they, they were very kind for them. Oops, something wrong here. <laughs> So, the farewell session, which... <laughs> okay, the farewell session, which had different uh, parts. Uh, there was a more uh, formal part when the, the students were awarded the prizes for their best work, and also there were some prizes for their participation along, along the course. So, there, they were, most of them, fan prizes. Uh, the final conclusion is that all the school participated at many, in uh, many different ways in this uh, summer course and all the services were involved. Uh, we had visits to the museum, to a social organization that uh, is inside ISAP. And the Portuguese uh, students that usually were kind of afraid of having classes in English, they were not used to speak in English, at the end, they, they said they enjoyed the experience and that the experience probably should have taken place sooner in their course. I must say that those students of, Port, uh, of, Port, uh, of ISEP were from the master uh, graduation, from the last year of, of the master graduation. Uh, so uh, we, we thought that now uh, we are ready for uh, the big change. And uh, as an example, um, we are starting right now with the English edition of some uh, master courses, um, which started uh, right uh, two days ago. Thank you. <laughs>